I didn't think that there was much longer that I had left to go like that because it was just med after med after med trying to keep me going. And so I was pretty desperate for something better. BABS stands for badass bitch. <laughs> and that pretty much sums her up. If her body would function and do what her mind was determined to do, uh, she'd be at the games, no doubt in my mind. It's February of 2010, I got a really bad bout of pneumonia. Was in the hospital for seven days and was on IV antibiotics, breathing treatments, and all through my life I'd had really bad lung issues and lung disease. They thought it was asthma, bronchitis, pleurisy, all you name it. I had been diagnosed with all different kinds of things. So I just kind of thought I was just one of those people who just had bad asthma. Went to a different pulmonologist and got a second opinion. And he said, I'm going to test you for this really rare thing. I, I don't think that's what it is. It's super rare. Not very many people have it. And so he sat me down in his office and he said, you know, I got your results back from your test. And he said, I don't know how to tell you this, but you tested positive. And my world just kind of like came to like a crashing halt. Alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency is a genetic lung and liver disease. And it is when your liver doesn't produce um, a protein that your body needs to protect your lungs from infection. And so my body basically um, attacks its own lung tissue. My doctor talked to me about, you know, one of the treatments for Alpha-1 is to get a new set of lungs. I was heading down that path very fast, and so I didn't want to do that. And so I talked to him and he said, if, if you want to get off of this, you got to do some things. And it's not going to be easy, and it's going to be a total lifestyle shift. I don't know, I have a big control thing with this disease, and. I don't want it to have any more control of my life than it already does, and so this is another way that I can be like, no, I can do this. I can take control of this. It was a hard, I, I won't lie, it was a hard decision to decide to start infusions because once you start, it's like a lifelong commitment. It's like getting married. You get married to these bottles. <laughs> it's like, are you really ready to do this for the rest of your life? Are you really ready to commit to saying, I will do this, get these infusions every week for the rest of my life. So Johnny is just at the forefront of always reminding her that she has to put her health absolutely first, you know, and he tries to keep her reined in a little bit too, but he's just an amazing guy, which is good because I know that he supports her and will help her with anything that she needs. One of the other things uh, of like this is the treatment that I take is you can't have children. So to have children, one, I would be giving them, you know, the genes for alpha one. And so we had a really serious conversation about that because, you know, I felt like I was telling him or taking away his ability, you know, his chance at ever having kids. And I saw these people out running down the road, and I thought, I can never do that. Never do that. I, I couldn't even barely walk up a single flight of stairs. Like, five stairs, and I was literally, like, bending over, winded, like, holding onto the rail. I went online, and I started reading about what people were posting about CrossFit, and seeing these before and after pictures of people who really started at kind of the body shape that I was in, you know, they didn't start from like felt thin, muscular bodies. They were just like normal people walking along the street that were like, you know, CrossFit did this for me. But I came in and I went to the intro class and I thought I was gonna die. <laughs> um, I did my first burpee and I thought, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if my lungs are gonna let me do this, but I really like the people. And that's something that I was really needing because from the point of which I was diagnosed until I, I went to that, it was two years. And it was two years of 
just struggle. When you have people that are just like poking at you and poking at you and poking at you, and they wanna put their stethoscope on your chest or talk to you, hear your story and all that, but they don't realize how invasive and how much that takes away from you. And I was like on steroids and gaining all this weight and just feeling like a medical oddity instead of like a person anymore. And so when I went into that class and people were like talking to me like a person and being friendly to me and they didn't care that I had alpha one, it was like so refreshing, you know? So I was like, I wanna come back. I wanna come back, I can do this. I met Jessie and she was my coach, but she also became my friend through that process because she learned how I, you know, who I was and what my limits were, but also kind of I think she learned how she could push me through that process. Day one Babs, she gave me this 25 mile long list of health concerns that she has due to her, to her disease. Um, and then in the very next breath, she's like, I'm ready to go, let's get started. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, still processing this list. <laughs> but she was just ready to go. She came in completely committed from the very first day. So the first year I did the open was 2014. And I was scared to death. I was literally scared shitless. Couldn't do a pull up. I couldn't do a double under. Uh, I was just barely box jumping. That year, like maybe the first or second workout had double unders and I literally like cried on the way to the gym that day because I had never gotten a single double under. That workout fell on World Rare Disease Day. And I'll never forget that because I got a message from one of my alpha friends just saying, you know, be proud that you're rare, like a precious gem. And I just, that stuck out in my head that day. And I was like, okay, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. And so probably about eight minutes in, I finally got a double under. And it was my first double under ever. I got my first double under ever in the open. And I was so excited. <laughs> I like literally shed a tear. Then they were like, come on, you got 30 more. <laughs> and I was like, no, what? So I stood there and one by one by one, I got all 30 of those double unders. And I'll never forget that day for as long as I live. It was like it was all coming together. You know, she had lost a ton of weight at that point. She started to have a lot of goals as an athlete instead of just, I wanna be able to breathe. Um, she was on a lung transplant list when she came to us. And, you know, just coming off the lung transplant list, getting her double unders, like all these things seem to happen during the time of the open. When I started CrossFit, my lung function tests were horrible. I was probably had the same lung function as someone who had smoked for like 20 years. And that was just the disease. Now I have improved my lung function tests enough to take the talk of transplant off the table. I really think that CrossFit has almost like a rehabilitative um, property that people don't give it credit for. I don't take, I don't mean this at all lightly when I say this. When anybody asks me why I do CrossFit or what CrossFit means to me, I, I will always tell them that CrossFit has saved my life and continues to save my life every day.